guys, Extreme Voltage back with another video, and today we're going to be discussing the basics of TensorFlow and Vuforia. Uh, so as you guys have already noticed, this year that we have two silver uh, minerals and a gold mineral, and it's probably really time consuming to like use a color sensor and go one by one to each thing to see where the gold block is actually placed. And so the most effective solution to this is computer vision, and FTC has actually done a really nice job in their 4.3 SDK update and put in Google's machine learning algorithm of TensorFlow um, and created a model that will accurately depict where the gold is when you take a picture that has all three objects in it. So we've created our um, a version similar to what the sample code has already done uh, in a way that we can use it. So I'll show you the code that we have and then explain a little bit about how the sample and our code works. And from there, we'll move on to for it. So quickly, if you look here, then we have our um, TensorFlow code. And as soon as I press in it, you'll see this camera come up. And I prefer landscape mode because landscape allows for um, you to get more pixels and a wider range of view. So here right now, it is not detecting anything as you can see, and even on my phone, what it says is press play to start tracking. So as soon as I press play now, you'll see on the camera, now you have highlighted in purple, red, and green. And it's giving you R values of 0 0.99, 0 0.98, and 0.97, which is relating to how efficiently is it sil silver and how effectively is it gold. And here right away, you can see number of objects detected in image is three, and the gold mineral position is right, which is also, as you can see, correct. And so the way this works is um, you need to have three objects in the image frame for this code to work. As soon as there's only two objects and you only have two objects printed here, it won't tell you where the gold is, even though the gold is in the frame. And this is good in that it could be the center or the left or the right, even if there, if there are only two. And if there's four objects, it'll fail because now I don't know what you're picking up and that's wrong. So that's kind of how the code works. So from here, uh, I'll show you how what the code actually looks like and what each part is doing. So here we are. Um, what it begins by doing is making sure that your phone is compatible to run uh, this kind of code, TensorFlow kind of code, on your um, on your laptop and on your phones. And once that's occurred, you're going to need a new Vuforia key that you're going to be able to place here and go on with the code. So after you've made sure that this device is compatible and it says you can press play to start tracking, it starts going into this uh, check of images where it's actually looking for three images to be inside the frame like I showed you earlier. This line right here is looking to make sure that there's three in the frame. And the minute there's three, it instantiates three in, uh, ints for the gold, silver, and silver. And once each of them have been inside the thing and they're not equal to negative one anymore, right? it'll print out what it thought the gold value was, either left right or center and of course you can then go on to save this value into a string which based on that string value you can say oh my robot needs to do this next or this next and you can proceed with your autonomous in any way that you want uh, for a while with doge cd and open cd but tensorflow has been uh, really effective from what we've seen so far so the next thing i want to discuss with you guys is euphoria now as many of you guys may know last season euphoria was also used to detect which position the in the initial glyph in the autonomous period should be placed. So this year, the Vuforia images are placed four along the field parameters, and they are random pictures, and our phone or our robot has to detect these images and so that it can get a good understanding of where it is located on the field. So again, we've created our own little bit of sample code of how we're gonna make this work. And basically what we've done is there's three sample codes that FTC gives you. Um, so again, like I, I don't, uh, what basically they've done is for even for TensorFlow, they made code that involves um, webcam and just your camera phone. So wherever you see sample code that has the word webcam in it, it's because this year FTC is letting you use UVC cameras um, on your robot to do these computer vision related things other than your phone camera if you do not want to use that for whatever reason it may be for quality or for wherever your phone is positioned. Um, and so with that, we have Vuforia that can be used this year to basically understand where you are on the field because the values it gives back to you is uh, where you are relative to the audience and what picture are you looking at. And these pictures don't move around like they did last year, so you they're always in a fixed spot. So here we'll show you the code again. So basically, again, landscape, landscape mode 
is preferable because again, you can see a wider range and you can see from further away. So here on the phone camera, you'll be able to see as soon as I press in it for before your rover nav, you'll see that the camera turns on over there and you'll be able to detect the image as soon as he gets in once I start pressing play. So once I press play on the phone camera screen, you'll be able to see a green, blue, and red, which represents the X, Y, and Z axes of the image. And on this phone screen, you'll be able to see that the visible target is the front craters and those X, Y, Z values being printed with a roll and pitch heading. So these roll and pitch headings are not as useful as you think they are, but the X, Y, and Z can be beneficial and based on what you do with those. But most importantly is that the visible target is front craters and that is what we're looking at there. So there's front craters, there's the robot, there's backspace, and there is the footprint. And so using those, you can understand where you're on their field and make decisions on what to do based on that. So to take a quick glimpse at code, um, really the code here is not much uh, for you to really develop into. One thing I will mention is again, FTC has come up with three sample uh, programs for this. And the three sample programs, again, one is just detection, while another, which will tell you whether you're on the red side of the field or the blue side of the field, and then, Another one is with the webcam doing the same thing, like the TensorFlow, which is just telling you red or blue, but assume that you're not using the phone camera. And then finally, the one that you really want to use or the one that our team really wants to use, uh, finding, finding it most beneficial is the Rover Ruckus one, because this one actually will return the specificity of each poster and not just blue or red in general. We'll actually tell you this is the crater, this is the blue, or this is the black in this thing. So really the code is really standard for all three and like from what we've done as well. But all you need to make sure to do is that using these X, Y, and Z values and looking at your camera displacements, you'll be able to picture uh, internally before you'll be able to understand these assets and then tell you what you're looking at. And then you can use those in strings and say that, oh, if I'm looking at this, then I need to do this next. Or if I'm looking at this, then I need to do this next. Um, but before it will be really helpful in this year's game in autonomous uh, to understand where you are right away without having to hard code things. Um, and it's much more efficient that way. Uh, anything else, Asher? Um, so I'm just curious, what other problems did you guys run into? Uh, so we didn't run into too many problems because before we've used last year, and we have some experience with CD. But one thing that I will mention is that the way TensorFlow's uh, machine model works is that even though those R values are coming to be 0.99 and 0.96, they might not come out that way right away, and that's because they use a confidence interval of 40% to begin with. But uh, I don't know if you've taken AP stats yet, but with that conference interval, it can vary largely based on your surroundings and things like that. And right, our lighting is not the very best. So initially at 40%, we weren't getting the perfect values and gold was being said to be on weird uh, areas. And that's why if you increase the conference interval to what we did is 62%, then at 62%, we are able to actually get the correct values in the model is trained to be a little bit more effective. So that might be something that you might want to. But other than that, it's a pretty smooth process. Uh, FTC has done a really good job of with their fix in this SDK and definitely would recommend. It'll save you time in autonomous because it is always limited to 30 seconds. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have learned a lot from this video. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure to ask us any questions if you guys have any. Uh, a link to our email will be in the description below. Our email is extremevoltage10515 at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.